guys we are back today with the all new 2024 chevy Trax, um as well as a new car update i haven't made a whole lot in the last few months for the channel there hasn't been a whole lot going on as far as cars um although there has i've had a few of them i just really haven't made videos of them but uh, i'd like to get a few more out this summer but um guys we'll focus on the video here of the 24 tracks um i ended up purchasing this purchasing this a few days ago um, I've had a few days with it to kind of experience it and give my feedback on it for the video here. But uh, we'll go ahead and get started, guys. Again, this is the 24 Chevy Trax. This particular one is a 1RS, so it is one step above the base model. So we're essentially driving a base model Chevy Trax here. Um, I would have laughed at you if you told me I'd be driving a Chevy Trax at some point. Um, all things considering the first generation before this, wasn't exactly the coolest looking thing out there but um i have to say chevy has been stepping their game up lately so much so that i'm of course in one now so um a few weeks ago i was driving on the freeway and i happened to see one of these driving um, i thought it was maybe a prototype car or maybe like a car from another country testing over here um, and i got behind it and it had regular old pedestrian plates on it and a nice little tracks nameplate um, so then i went ahead and jumped over to the general motors website and lo and behold the new generation tracks i mean that shows how much i pay attention to this company um not a whole lot but i was quite impressed i started building one uh and i was intrigued uh, but the problem is with these they're not on dealer lots they're very hard to get um due to the you know they're still blaming ship shortages and all that crap but um they're very hard to get right now and so they're slowly coming to the states um, they are built in Korea so with that said you know they're getting a little bit here and there and people want these things like crazy I had probably called at least at least 15 dealers um, just to see if I can maybe get my hands on one and every dealer I called put me on a wait list uh, they kind of laughed and said wait three months to six months we'll give you a call um, and you can't even order one of these. You just get what you get. Whatever the dealer gets, you pick it out. If you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. Um, and so I had built basically this identical spec right here online. Um, again, this is the 1RS, which is exactly what I wanted. And I'll go into that in a minute, why I wanted the 1RS. Um, mainly just because these things, they're not expensive. I think a top of the line active is like 26 grand. Um, plus tax. I mean, the price variation for these things is not that much. But with all of that, I paid $24,000 flat out the door for this car. Now, I didn't have a family discount I was able to use towards this. But with all that, guys, a sub $25,000 car today is super hard to come by, especially brand new. Um, even used is a little hard. Um, so when I got to the dealer, I went on a test drive of the car. I called the guy. He told me, you know, it would be prepped for the next day for me to look at. I told him basically, just let me come look at it now just so I know I want it. And I'm really glad I did because when I got the, got to look at this car, it was filthy. It was full of like four months old dirt from being traveled across the ocean. Um, and then the train or however it was shipped here, the car was filthy. Um, but I didn't care. I just wanted to see what it was all about. And I'm really glad I did because after I got back on the test drive, there was about three other people I'm um, trying to buy this car, um, but of course dealers when you're test driving a car. It's your car until you decide you want it um, So basically right then and there I had to make up my mind whether I wanted the car and I'm, I'm glad I did I'm super happy with it so far. Uh, like I said, I picked it up a few days ago, and I've just been experiencing it I've liked it. It's not a race car. It's nothing fancy, but it's a good little car for what you need it to do It's got everything you need and really nothing you don't um, I'm currently driving a 2007 Explorer, so I mean, this is quite a bit nicer than that, and they have about the same features. This has just the modern basic amenities, um, so I'm very happy with it. I'm not expecting much going into a Chevy Trax, but I gotta say I'm very impressed with it so far. So let's go down the list of reasons why I wanted the 1RS, um, and now first and foremost, it's gonna be the wheels down here. So on the 1RS, you get these 18-inch polished face black wheels well i say they're black but they have some metallic in them so as you, can, as you can see right there they do look pretty good and they are wrapped on some nice goodyear uh, assurance tires so i think these are pretty good tires as well um 
but they're 18 inches. You go to the 2RS or the Active, I believe you get 19 inches. 19 inches on a subcompact SUV. I don't think it's gonna ride the best. And this already is pretty jumpy as it is. So with 19s, it's just gonna ride a lot more harsh. And of course, they're all black, so you have no contrast. I think the silver contrasting looks really good with the white on the car. Um, I built this exact spec with the exception of this color in silver. I wanted a silver one. Um, but when he told me there was a white one available, I, I said, fine, the white looks just as good, I think. So I think it was a good one. Um, like I said, this was the exact spec I built and it's got a sunroof on it. It's got the driver assistance package. Um, and those are the only two options it has. So sunroof, I'm super glad it has the moonroof. Um, those are kind of hard to get. A lot of these don't have moonroofs on them. Um, but coming to the rear of it, I'll hit the little unlock button. There's a lot of incandescent bulbs on this car. Uh, the headlights are projector, I want to say they're LEDs, but everything else is incandescent. The plate bulbs are LED. Um, you have some nice piano black accenting down there. Uh, and then again, when I got the car, it had been sitting for several months and the porters kind of just rushed it out. Um, the paint was pretty stained. So I had the clay bar in the top half. It's pretty much here and I'll probably clay barred it the other day. Um, and gave it a proper wax and a actual detail because like I said, the car was prepped poorly. Um, but whatever, I had no, no problem doing that as I would have probably done it anyways. Um, again, there's your incandescence up there. I gotta remind yourself, this is GM's cheapest model. So, um, but you have some nice LEDs up there. I gotta say, this looks like a uh, baby blazer. And that's why I really like it. Cause I've really liked what GM's been putting out these last few years. Um, and you have your gloss black grill with your black bow tie and you have your black mirror caps so i think you know for what it is it, it's a quite a cool little package and then the cladding is not overdone like a lot of companies seem to do today uh, that's my own opinion though uh, and then my favorite convenience factor here is the gas tank is on the left side and you have the capless filler so that's pretty cool as well so go inside and check out what we have so checking out the interior again this is their cheapest model so you know nothing too crazy in the door panels but coming from a 2007 explorer i'm totally used to the hard plastics that they use um but yeah it's not bad most people driving these things are just going to be beating the crap out of them so probably more durable materials the better but let's jump on over inside see what we got uh, it is a fully manual driver's seat Stitching is pretty cool. You have some white and red stitching. So the contrast is pretty cool. We'll jump over to the interior. We have your gauge dimmers right there, auto headlights, your steering wheel control, the tilt and telescope, uh, and then some red accenting. It's, you know, usually I wouldn't care for stuff like this, but the amount of red they use is so subtle. I think it really goes with the rest of the car. Uh, but let's jump on into it. Now, I have to say I'm pretty comfortable overall in this car. Um, my only gripe with the car is that I hit my leg right here when I drive. It's kind of annoying, um, but a lot of small cars do have the same problem. Other than that, I have gobs of foot room and leg room. Uh, I have all the room I could ever want on this side, um, but that's really my only main complaint. Looking at it, we do have a uh, flat bottomed wheel uh, with some stitching here and it is perforated. Um, looks pretty good. You have a heated wheel as well. There's your collision system. Uh, it does have adaptive cruise, uh, the braking, the heads up display. Uh, then it does have your lane keep when you drive, so it kind of steers you in your lane when you have cruise control on. Uh, I have come to appreciate that. That is one thing I probably would not have opted for, but I'm not complaining that I have it now. Again, blind spot mirrors are kind of right there if you can see the little light bulb there um, and then the other thing that comes with the 1LT is the analog traditional style gauges so you move on up to the LT and up you get a LCD screen for your gauges uh, usually I don't complain about that kind of stuff but I just wasn't a fan of the way GM did their fonts and their layouts uh, I think this just makes the experience a lot better to drive again that's a little thing but just one more reason for me personally um, to get the one RS because you get real gauges and then you know if you step on 
any other higher trims than this, this whole thing will be a screen basically. So we'll start it up. Uh, it is a switchblade key. Do you have remote start? So uh, you have remote start, which is cool. And then again, I have the app on my phone. I can also start it from across, you know, across the neighborhood if I wanted to, but uh, we'll flick to start. So as you can see, uh, I'm getting about 34 miles a gallon currently. I just reset it. Uh, this thing sips gas. I'm very impressed with the gas mileage so far. Uh, and you get a little gauge sweep right there. And again, there's your screen. So this is like, I want to say my link. I don't know. I'm not a big GM person. So um, as you can see, this hook up to your wireless CarPlay right away. Um, but there it is up top. There's the dash. It's all hard plastic. But I have to say, considering what GM's pumped out in the past, I mean, some of the stuff is super nice. Even for like a cheaper vehicle. Um, now we do get manual climate again. Uh, my 07 Explorer has manual climate, so uh, and I really never use auto anyways. But um, you know, it's single zone. I wish it was dual, but you know what do you what do you expect? You get heated seats, heated steering wheel. Those are those are the things we want in the winter time. Uh, and then coming down here, we do have a traditional gear shifter, which is really cool. Uh, and then probably my favorite thing with the car. It has a six-speed regular automatic transmission. Now, this is a 1.2-liter uh, Ecotec turbo. Uh, the 1.2-liter in the Chevy Trailblazer, I want to say that's a CVT. So, why they're using a six-speed in this and a CVT in the Trailblazer, I don't know. But I, what I do know is that I would rather have the six-speed. That's so cool. You get a six-speed. This car reminds me of something that was made 15 years ago, like the technology-wise. You get manual climate, six-speed automatic. It's all good stuff. Uh, it's not overdone. It's simple. It works. Um, and that's, I'm a big fan of that kind of stuff. You have an electronic parking brake right here. Your auto start stop cancellation, which is super cool. They give you a button. Uh, I know on some of GM's earlier start stop models, you had no option but to have it on all the time. Um, and there's your lane keeping button right there. Plenty of storage throughout. You have your USB C charger with your USB. 12 volt. Again, like I said, plenty of storage. Some storage right here, put it in the park. Um, and then this is something I just happened to notice. There's a little cutout for your phone to sit right here. So you can leave your phone right here as you're driving. Um, if you want to use directions and you're not using CarPlay. A little phone slot, super cool. And the phone actually sits up really nice. Um, I love that feature. Plenty of storage again, like I said. I'm pretty impressed with this car. It's kind of hard to impress me on a lot of things. But for the package and the price point, I, like, I'm just... It's pretty cool. Um, you have a manual dimmer up there. Uh, then you have OnStar and all that stuff. Here's your moonroof. One touch open. Uh, then you can open it actually a little bit more and it'll go back all the way. Pretty big moonroof cutout for a small SUV like this. Pretty big. Um, I really do enjoy the moonroof on this car as well. Again, there's the passenger side. Uh, then you get your little vents over there. They are, you just slide that to control your airflow right there. A little storage pocket, um, all that stuff. It's not lit or anything like that. Um, again, this is like, if you're comparing cars from the 90s, this may as well be like a Dodge Neon. Um, but we'll step on out, we'll give it a quick little rev. That is a three cylinder 1.2 turbo. I gotta say, it's got a unique noise. Pop the hood on it. We'll give you guys the whole scope of the car here. But we'll leave it off just for the sake of audio. And that's, I think I covered about everything for the front half. Not a whole lot to go over. Um, I will say the armrest is not padded. It is slightly padded, but it's nothing special. Uh, and then there's your inside there. So, said. For what it is, I'm pretty happy with it. This car was actually built back in March. Um, and it, it's literally just got here the other day. So that's how long it's going to take your tracks to get here. Um, but let's jump into the rear. Materials, all hard plastic. It's what you're going to get. Um, Got to say, being six foot tall and riding behind myself, I'm pretty comfortable. Um, good thigh support. I mean... It's, it is not bad back here. No armrest, though. That's, that's the one thing I would miss. 
but it's totally understandable why you may not have an armrest in a Trax. Uh, on off up there, incandescent bulbs again. Looks like that's probably a Bluetooth mic. Um, then we do have some handles, some damped handles uh, for all the passengers over there. Um, and again, showing its kind of cheapness, no vents, but you have a nice little deep cubby right there. No mat pockets, uh, but you do have some storage over there. Uh, and I would say you could probably finagle a water bottle. It looks like maybe there's a cut out there. So you could probably finagle a water bottle back there. You do have one touchdown windows. Again, very comfortable back here. So yeah, there it is. We'll get out real fast. Coming to the rear, we'll fold the seat. Hit this button to toggle your headrest. And you are down. Easy. So, there's that. Uh, and then coming to the trunk of the tracks, here we are. A, a nice large opening. Uh, and there's your right side folded. So you do have a good bit of room back here. Nothing too crazy. And again, it's a compact SUV, but uh, more than capable of hauling a few things if you if you need to. Now, what I will say about this car is it's just, I wish it were just a little bit higher. I still find myself kind of bending down to get in it, um, but it's not bad compared to um, cars I've had in the past where you have to like hoist yourself out. But um, yeah, it's not too bad. It's been very easy to live with so far. Hopefully reliability is pretty good, but we will see. Uh, the one two's been out for a few years now and really there hasn't been a whole lot of compliance with it. So little windbreaker there passenger side again compared to the old tracks uh, the whole front end i mean the whole interior is so much bigger um, you can actually spread your legs out up here you have a lot more room to stretch out um like it's i'm very impressed with it so let's check out the window sticker here there's your hazards i just realized your hazards are right there but um we'll open up the non damp glove box and uh, we'll pull out the window sticker here so coming over here to the window stickers you can see it's your 24 tracks one rs feel free to pause it if you want to see any of the basic stuff it is equipped with uh, 28 city 32 highway um, i guess i've been seeing about 30 or so average over the 100 miles i've had on it um but we'll check out the options this one has it's pretty much fully optioned for the package here uh we have the sunroof the, the driver confidence uh, and then a license plate bracket which i told them not to install um i still have it in the trunk though but uh anyways so we have a total sticker of 24 280 uh again i paid 24 with tax out the door on it that's a fantastic value for a brand new car um, but again there's your one two with your six speed auto now, one thing the Trax does not have across any of the um, trim models is premium audio. You're going to get the same basic six-speaker audio uh, as you would in the LS, straight up to the Premier or the you know the one R or two RS. Had this car come with premium audio, I probably would have bought a top trim. Uh, that was just one more reason for me personally not to go above and beyond to get the top trim um because you're getting the same audio system all throughout the model um so three grand premium for a you know two rs or a what do we call it an active you get leather seats and a lcd gauge cluster that's going to freeze on you a bigger infotainment system and a wireless charging pad i mean you tell me if you can justify that but personally i couldn't and of course i couldn't because this is the only car i could get <laughs> the only tracks i could get um but they're just a little food for thought there if you guys had not thought of that and you're interested in one of these under the hood i will say this is kind of a heavy hood for what it is but we do have the uh 1.2 three cylinder turbo um i think it's got like 130 something horsepower and 160 pound feet it's a pretty healthy number i mean for this car and the way that it puts the power down i'm i'm impressed um you're not winning a whole lot of races with it um you know that's an understatement but you know it's it's true it's not very quick but it's peppy uh I, if i could 
compare this to any car I've owned in the past. It feels very similar to my uh, 2012 Fusion with the two and a half liter four cylinder. It feels just like that to drive. Um, but yeah, guys, that's about it for the tracks. I don't know what else there is to go over. Um, if you have any questions, drop them down below. I'm going to try to have a few videos of this thing. Probably do a thousand mile, 5,000 mile update or something like that. But so far, so good. There's been no drama with the tracks three days in. And I'm excited to see where we go with this thing. Um, so guys, as usual, hope you enjoyed. And thanks for watching. And we'll talk to you guys all later.